Hey everyone, welcome back to the Class 1A podcast. My name is Andrew Jameskin, and that is Dylan Beal. And today we are going to be talking about what do we want to see from the ending My Hero Academia. So we're going to cut the ending short. Pretty much the prompt that we came up with is based off everything we know. So that kind of goes up to the end of Vigilantes. That goes up to the uh, current point in the manga. So there is going to be light spoilers, but less talking about specific events in the story, but more talking about with all the information that we know that's canon in the My Hero Academia universe, what would make me and Dylan the happiest with how the series ends? No matter how wild grounded that is, you know me and Dylan are generally different than that. That's kind of the prompt we're going to go with, and I want to jump right in Dylan, waste no more time. Dylan, how do you want My Hero Academia to end that will make you the happiest person in the world? So I've been thinking about this question for at least two years now and formulating the perfect ending. And my perfect ending is always slightly updated as the manga is going on. But here is how it's going to end. I think there's some things that are very true. All for one has to be defeated and Shigaraki has to be saved in some form. It doesn't mean like total redemption for Shigaraki or anything, but probably in some form. So the way that I think it's going to end is that Deku is going to meet up with Shigaraki uh, in his final super form or whatever. Uh, and there's going to be a coming together of all for one and one for all. I imagine this happening not through any sort of like external powers, but basically in the vested state. So imagine in the vested state where all of the different aspects of uh, one for all were. And you see a door behind it. They all come together and they're like, Deku, it is time. They open up the door and it's a door to all for one and they enter in there and they do this like crazy like we're we're beyond quirks at this point right we're like we're going we're going wild places where you know that all for one and one for all have some sort of connection uh together and i think it's literally through the vestige state and so they do battle within the vestige state and deku finally gains control he now has control of one for all and all for one and up until this point horikoshi's been dropping these little lines about how awful hero society is. Hero society is terrible at this point. There is massive discrimination. Uh, there's basically a huge caste system going on. People are constantly in danger from villains. The world is upturned. Technology has slowed down and not advanced in decades because of quirks. Like everything is stagnant. Everything that hero society has done has been like objectively worse for mm -hmm. this society. And so Deku comes to this realization that it needs to be stopped. So while he's having this battle for Shigaraki and he gains control of all for one and one for all, he enables all for nothing and wipes out quirks going forward. Everyone that has a quirk has been eliminated. This not only takes eliminated, like, eliminated, all the quirks are eliminated. People are still there, but the quirks are yeah. eliminated. So it is the power of the stockpiling power of one for all. And it is like the ability to take away quirks that all for one has. And so the coming together of them being all for nothing and getting rid of all the quirks in hero society. And that's how my hero ends with Deku becoming the greatest hero of all time because he eliminated the greatest source of threat in the entire world, which is quirks. In your mind, is the removal of quirks addressed or does it happen? Deku comes out saying, hey, it's done. And there's just like a big group pose and like the future is going to be very different and they just leave it open-ended. Do you yeah, want I to think... see some government reform or do you well, want just to end to it right that, after the yeah. fight? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think a really cool thing would be like a couple like epilogue chapters of like, what does the society look like building back up? But like my, uh, what I imagine would probably happen is like the thing of like, Deku coming out of the rubble or whatever, and then like everyone standing around going like, "Well, I guess it, it is a dawn of a, like a new era," and they kind of look up to the sky and it's like bright and blue or whatnot, like very, very um, like it looks like a classic like trope or whatever of like a new beginning or whatever. Um, but I do think a couple extra chapters of like the aftermath of that of like what this actually means for the society would be really cool. That'd be definitely ideal. I hear this. This is something you've talked about. For years, actually, this idea of the removal of all quirks being the end of my hero is something I, God knows when you brought that up the first time. I remember the first time I ever kind of hearing about it, I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> but as it goes along more and more, it's something I do find to be really unique. I think it kind of makes the ending the cleanest because otherwise people 
to just be begging more forever because if everything's still there, everyone wants more. So I think it's a really yeah. clean way to end the story. And I think it'd be different. I mean, <laughs> I feel like most shonen just have a little bit of a time jump, give an update on where everyone is, and then end. Some could continue on in shows like Boruto. Some might not in demons like shows like Demon Slayer. Like it, uh, it all depends kind of on that. So, yeah, I, I think I think the important thing here is I think it all depends on how brave Horikoshi is, um, because I think the story that my hero is telling, I don't see anything afterwards because it runs into the Dragon Ball Z problem of its infinite scaling ad nauseum, right? Yeah. I, I don't mind looking backwards in the story of going into like small side stories of like, how do things look like in this world that we already know? But going forward, it's like, okay, well, we already fought the existential threat of all for one. Like, what what do we do now? It's like, okay, well, I guess we have just stronger people over and over. Like, it, it doesn't feel as good. There's like less compelling stories there, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I... You gotta think, though, all this is happening in Japan right now, though, and the fact is, like, All for One and One for All was just kind of, like, created out in just pure will, kind of. Like, the the original the origination of the quirks are kind of weird for both of them. Like, couldn't there mm-hmm. theoretically be another world-ending threat, like, in multiple other countries? Like, I think that'd be really the only way to do it is, like, you can't tell me in a country that is America that has, I don't know, I'm probably the same population as Japan, probably bigger, um, that there couldn't be someone else that will together quirks kind of like this. So, like, no, I there, think... There, there could be. It would just be boring, though. Is that's the true. Thing You've is, already like, kind of seen it. Yeah, we, we've already gone through those things. I've already seen, like, what does, what does like, the high end of quirks kind of look like? And then if you do explore that area, like I said, it's a Dragon Ball problem where it's just like, okay, I guess we're just gods fighting against each other now. That's it's true. like do we really want that for my hero yeah and i guess i haven't watched dbc near as much as you so that I, don't, I don't understand that as much but i think that's a really good point so moving into my side then we kind of come back together at the end and talk about both it. of it all together i go a very different approach i have a goddamn checklist <laughs> number one we're rocking decking up together go to piss off some people that is the number one me. thing it's i me. need you're pissed you're pissing I, off i know it is i, I knew that was not going to be a popular one Number two, I want Deku till the very last moment to try and save Shigaraki. I want the big final fight, but for the first time in his life, realize that some people cannot be brought back around and has to actually end him. Because I think that is a final conclusion to Deku's arc that he has him. Up till this moment, he still thinks that everyone can be saved. And obviously, in a fantasy world, everyone can be saved. But to bring it back down a little bit more reality, the series has gotten a lot more gritty. Deku come to the realization that not everything in his power can be saved would be a really kind of cool and big change for Deku. And seeing how he reacted to that, I would absolutely love. Three, I want to know what is up with Sir Night Eye's prediction of all. At this point, it feels like All Might's death would be pointless. I'm not sorry for All Might's stand, <laughs> but I want to know, was that left behind? Did Deku find some way to change the future in Night Eye's vision to save him? Like, I want that thread wrapped up because of how much I loved All Might in the first couple of years and how pretty much an entire season based around this kind of prediction and nothing has came out of it and we are approaching the end. So that is another thing that I would love to see. Four, I want to see government change, or at least the pledge of it. Of I think you're kind of talking about it, that we've seen multiple people kind of come out of it, especially Hawks. I would love to see Hawks come out of all this, survive somehow, and say, no, fuck the current uh, hero safety, public safety commission, or whatever it is. I'm going to take it over, and I'm not going to allow people like me and Nagant to be used as they have been in the past, and kind of start making a change there, because it is, again a big thing that has been addressed over and over again in the series that like, oh, it's corrupt. But if nothing happens to it before it ends, I'll be a little upset. Because again, you're talking about all these big things and seeing it not come out of anything just feels weird. Number five, I would rather die than there be a time skip in My Hero Academia. Please do not add like a major time jump. Fine, you want to do a month, a couple months after the fight so that little things can do it. But if you give me a five-year time jump at the end of the series, I will be pissed. Just because, again, 
that ends or ruins any possibilities of little epilogues or little stories right at the ending of how things are dealing with the repercussion and bring society back, all that kind of stuff. You can't brush away society being completely destroyed in a one chapter time skip. So please do not do that to end the series. Seven, six, I lost count. <laughs> I want Endeavor to die. Again, going with the same one with Deku, I think he's already come around. But again, giving the idea that no matter how hard you try, sometimes your past mistakes are still going to catch up with you and you can never truly fix things. Again, I think that's a lesson for Todoroki. I think it's a lesson for Deku who's getting very closer to him, all that. And again, I it just feels weird if Endeavor gets to live a happy life after all this. I mean, the, having to fight Adabi eventually, fighting, I mean, Todoroki's feelings towards him, his family's feelings towards him. Like, great, you've done everything you can, but dying is really the only way for Endeavor to end. Um, I think those are a lot of the big ones. I I don't care about the removal of quirks. I honestly thought about adding in the removal of quirks because I do think it is really cool things. And like, as the more you talk about it, it becomes more of a reality I would li really like to see. But I don't think that has to be included for me to really like to see how my hero academia ends. I think the kind of the reform and seeing Deku, like again, it's still the story about how Deku became the greatest hero ever. And I feel like just because he is the last person to defeat a big bad that makes him the greatest hero ever kind of feels lame. Like I would like to see Deku officially named the number one hero at the end of the series. Like even if it's kind of like a sacri like a symbolic thing after beating everything and like, hey, to kind of bring back hope for all of Japan after all for one is defeated, they officially name uh, Deku the new number one hero after all of his secrets have been revealed and stuff like that. Uh, to kind of give something to rally around, like, hey, All Might 2.0, pretty much. I think it'd be a really cool way and a way where you can kind of leave it open. Like, hey, Deku achieved his goal without having to have a time jump or all these kind of um, questions of like, well, Hawk still is better than Deku and all that. Nope. Symbolic thing. We're building around All Might 2.0, pretty much. And that's how we're going to go forward. So I got some I got some notes there. So one, um. I, I do like the proposals, and I think there's an overlap of what we see a good ending is, and that is uh, Horikoshi not playing a safe. I think that's the thing that was going to hold the series back the most at the end, is how safe does Horikoshi play it? Does he kill people off? Does he allow things not to end in the most satisfying way? Because I think, in a way, by doing that, you actually do make a more satisfying ending, yeah. right? Like, um, I can go back and forth on Endeavor, um, I actually think he survives, but for the same reason that you said, it's not that he gets this happy ending or anything, but like he has to live out a normal life after this. Like that is the atonement yeah. of like, you did these bad things. Now you just have to exist with those thoughts. Now um, you, there's no redemption. There's no martyrdom after this. It's just, you have to live with your, your actions. And I like that like slight twist on it of being like a little bit more real, kind of like what you were saying with Shigaraki of like, Hey, we can't save him. Like we just have to kill him. Like that's the reality. Um, and I and I think like to go even further, I actually do hope we see a little bit more death at the end. Um, mm -hmm. Horikoshi has had a few characters die, but for the most part, like has really pulled it back and not really shown us too much. Um, I think there still is a chance for a satisfying All Might death, like a second death of All Might, basically. Really? Um, I think it's there, but I think it's going to be tough to actually do. Because they do need to do something. Need to they need to address like, hey, Sir Night, I saw this thing. How did we either get around it, or how did or how are we going to steer right into it? Right. Um, I hope it's not a fake out of like, oh wow, you actually didn't see him dead. It was just him covered in someone else's blood. I hope it's not that. I hope yeah. it literally is like a we did prevent this thing, or we did not prevent this thing. Like a very clear cut of one of the two, instead of kind of like skirting around it. Yeah. I completely agree. And yeah, kind of go to the point is that we don't want the staple ending because what could easily happen is all for one is defeated by whoever. Deku beats slash save Shigaraki. The world is saved. Takes a couple months to rebuild. Society goes back to normal. Deku becomes named the number one because he is really all my 2.0. Like that could literally be the ending of My Hero Academia very easily if Horikoshi doesn't want to do the thing. Maybe a couple deaths. We're seeing side character deaths here and there. When nothing cares about. I mean, I think that could very easily be the next 40 chapters 
have no big twist, have some threads wrapped up and end it there. And that would still be okay. Because I, th- I know the fights are going to be great. I know the ending is going to be well. Seeing Deku officially named number one is going to be a cool moment. But the fact that I could predict it right now makes it less of a cool ending. Like the fact that you could kind of predict where it could go and if it went that way right on the dot would be a sad part. Oh, number eight, number nine, number 10, <laughs> number 11, whatever it is on my list. I want to see Ko- Koichi in the main series. We talked about oh, that before. Yes, yes, I want to yes, have him in yes. there from Vigilantes. If you don't know who that is already, we're both big fans of Vigilantes. Love to see him in the story. I forgot that. That was actually one of the first things on my list. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think really what we want is not for it to be a predictable shonen ending. And having all these ideas that you built up. Like we, neither one of us even talked about Doomsday Theory. I mean, that is something that they have quirked Doomsday Theory or whatever. That they have talked about multiple times. That takes generations to kind of do it. We have no idea really how that's going to do. Dylan's, I guess, just says yeah, get rid of quirks. I, I think, yeah, that, that's so. like the getting rid of the quirks. Like that is like a like a deep reason for it. Of like, hey, quirk singularity literally is a thing that we're going to have to deal with. Like we talked about it kind of recently, and I hope, I hope that's not our conclusion of quirk singularity. Like I hope it is like actually addressed of like the societal like fact of it. And that's the thing that a lot of these threads, I'm afraid that they're just going to have kind of a quick conversation on it or a quick moment around it, and that's it. And that mm-hmm. could be happening. That happens in Shonen all the time. It, excuse me. You can't blame Horikoshi for that, but it'd be sad being a series that we spend much more time on and think about a lot harder than a lot of other Shonen series. <laughs> so I think we kind of have a little bit higher hopes for it, but a normal Shonen ending would still end my Hero Academia. It was one of my favorite stories ever, but I think both of us want to challenge Horikoshi to try to use all these interesting threads and characters he thought up to come up with something that at least most of the people won't predict. We could probably still, if we listed out a thousand different endings, we could probably guess what the ending of my hero academia would be. But yeah, um, and I think I think the important thing for here for Horikoshi is going to be though is this ending is incredibly important because because we know the next thing he's going to work on is not going to be my hero. Uh, he said something about like he wants to do like a horror manga next or something, but he clearly wants to step away from my hero, which like. If he wants to, he's going to have to do, like, a good ending. Like, he's yeah. going to have to end the series, like, pretty concisely and be like, here is the package of my work. I'm going on to something else. Otherwise, it'll haunt him forever. And that's yes. kind of the one thing that that I like the idea of a remover of quirks or something kind of like that. Like, if if you don't have, like, something that kind of cuts it off, people will beg forever and ever. And, like, even you and me, after it ends, all that, we'll still say, damn. I wish there was more of my hero academia coming out weekly. But at the point, yep. if it's a good ending, we'll still do that. We'll always feel that way. But for the mass majority of people that generally are online and all those people that just cannot handle things, <laughs> Horikoshi, for your sake, please have a have a solid ending. Yep. But I mean really anything else. I know we just kinda wanna come with pitch, kinda comes back in the middle. I think we're we're aligned. I, I liked a lot of the ideas that you kind of had and I think it'd be really interesting too, like for anyone else that's kinda listening, like on Twitter, on YouTube, where you kind of do it, or Dylan, where you can kind of do like one of the the YouTube posts. Like, what are your kind of big things that you want to do? I mean, I think I got the relationship part. I got the death part. I got the fight part. I got the number one hero part. Like, I think for me, that's the four big things I really want to see in my hero academia with a couple of endings there. But like, are there other parts we're missing? Are there other threads? Like, Dylan, do you care if we ever meet Deku's dad? I, I kind of want to. I, we have to now because like, Horikoshi, uh, Horikoshi has addressed it and said, like, it will be resolved at some point. Oh, he so did? Like, yeah, so it's like, okay, come on. Like, if, if he's just some dude, I'm going to be upset. He's just, I like, some too. random dude. Um, he, there ha- It has to be building up somewhere, right? I'll like, also be pissed if it's a, uh, a Darth Vader moment of all for one, just announcing it to Deku. That would be dumb. Even if it is fake, I would not like that. But Horikoshi is such a Star Wars fan that yeah. I could see him trying to make a reference like that. But I don't know how I would feel about that. Uh, I don't know if they could just drop that. They have not set it up in any sort of way, so it would the be the timeline really doesn't make sense or anything either. Like it just wouldn't make sense. Um, how about what other open threads are kind of out there? Um, Obero, do we see a happy ending with Obero, present Mike, and Aizawa, or does it kind of mm. end where it's at? Because again, it's another thing they keep kind of teasing. They kind of used them recently in the current arc. Like, do we see more I mean, of them or is it just Eerie. always going to be locked up? We have Eerie now. And so it's like a little bit difficult because like, 
I think you could just undo all of that. I think I'm not 100% sure. Like, I, I guess the real question is like, how far from death can you bring someone back? Um, I, I would like to see it because I think it'd be a cool kind of resolution to her character of like her big payoff in the end is she realizes she could undo the Nomu and she could turn the Nomu back into people. I think that'd be a really cool like kind of ending for Eerie. Um, but they're going to have to start doing some stuff with it soon. Shit, I, I don't know. I hope as much as it, like as much as I love Eerie and I wanted her to be a bigger part of the story, I fear bringing her back at this point is just going to make her overpowered. And again, you have to remove quirks or something at the end. Like if you open up the idea of bringing back people that far gone to normal people, that kind of removes a lot of the injury and death part of this entire final arc knowing that Eerie can just kind of fix all of it and everyone goes back on the hero side and normal. I don't love the idea of that. I, I, think, but I, I think feel like depends. you would have had to put those limitations on before, introduced it before or something. Well, I think they kind of te have teased it so far with the no move. Like they said that they're walking zombies, but like if I don't, I don't know, I feel like there, there still is like enough time to be like, yeah, they're like, they're, they're husks of people, but like the people are still there somewhere and yeah. we can bring them back. I think that's the only kind of inroad here because like, yeah, I don't want to see the fact of like her walking around like a battlefield, like just like bringing people back to life who are very clearly dead. Like if there is a route through the Nomu, they're going to have to like do some proof that they are still there in some way. Which again, I don't know if it's worth the setup. Like do we, if we knew someone that turned into a Nomu, I think that would be one thing. But the fact is, like, we didn't have anyone die and was, like, confirmed to be Nomu. There's rumors and stuff of all that kind of stuff. But, like... But, but I mean, what's, what's what's like, Eerie's big payoff, then? Was it, like, M Muriel, then? Or, I think it was that, Muriel, yes. Is that really the big payoff? Yes. Um, if so, maybe a little bit of a miss. It since was a it cool all, chapter, Since but... it all happened off-screen, yeah. it was absolutely the peak. Because, otherwise, if you introduce that, give that screen time, and start explaining how that works, again... Horikoshi's world works so well because you don't explain anything. And if you explain how Eerie's able to do things, that opens more doors to more questions and more why didn't this happen? Why didn't that happen? Because theoretically, if he could give back uh, Mirio's quirk, why can't she make All Might good again? You could just reverse yeah. someone's body back in time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's again, a that, good point. That's another thing <laughs> I, I thought love. about. Like, wait. Is All Might at one point just going to have Eerie touch him and go and end up fighting all for one um, in the end? Because that, that is an open door that has been opened mm -hmm. by Mirio being brought back in time. So I want Eerie to stay out of this story because I want to stay <laughs> grounded with the people that are there. Otherwise, it's I'm already asking the question. I didn't bring it up here because I don't want people to think about that. But All Might theoretically could be yeah, in this fight right now. Out. We have to cut it out. We have to keep the secret hidden. Yeah, I mean, it's it's things like that that like you don't want to think too hard. We think too hard about my hero academia sometimes and have thoughts like that, and those are not good thoughts. Okay, here's my last ask for the ending. So everybody gets their moment. Everybody gets their their spotlight moment, right? Here's here's mine. Here's mine. Minetta learns to respect women. Never. He, he, he will die. The, he will die no, touching a boob or something. <laughs> no, that's that's his that's his that's his moment. That's going to be his moment. He's There's going to be a situation, and he's going to go, you know what? This isn't appropriate. I'm not going to do this. I'm mm -hmm. not going to engage in this. We are more likely to see in canon Mineta getting arrested for sexual assault than him ever learning to respect women. Canonly. Like, that is, you are asking too much. Quirk <laughs> removal is more realistic than Mineta becoming a changed man. And that okay, is listen, saying something. My, my prediction is going to be true. Like, like clip it. I will I will put money on that being the ending. But regardless, I would like to see Mineta get thrown in jail. That would be very good. I would, I would be happy. That would make me an extra happy man. I think but... all the fandom would just like, it'd be, it'd be incredibly happy with that. It would. It'd be, it'd be a just ending. That That's the only way for him to have character develop. But I think that's a pretty good spot there. Then we got through a lot we wanted to talk to. Mm -hmm. Again, as I was saying earlier, and then got sidetracked, of course. Let me know what you guys want to see in your endings of My Hero Academia. If you agree with Dylan, if you agree with me, if you have some kind of combination of the two or have your own checklist or kind of ideas that you'd love to see, we would love to hear about them, talk about them. 
um because who knows maybe in a couple months we could do it again with some changes and of course we'll talk about the nmi here academia so maybe we'll see who some people that are really smart and guessed right but that'll be all for this today, today's episode of class one a thank you all so much for listening and watching and we will be back next time see you then